see some of the other news headlines like this I definitely did not believe that this was going to happen but it looks like it's very very close to happening if it doesn't happen at this point there will be egg on the face of Celtic because the the, the briefing that's been going on from clearly both sides is that a deal is very close to being done between uh, Dermot Desmond and Brendan Rodgers and so that's obviously his unveiling in 2016 uh, the world is a slightly different place now but Brendan Rodgers is um, convinced that he wants to go back and conquer European football at Celtic fair play for both of them really mm. for like deciding that this is the right thing for us assuming it works because generally you don't go back in football not a huge number of examples of people who have successfully gone back somewhere mm. Carlo Ancelotti the best example he's been to Real Madrid twice yeah yeah it, like it can work in rare examples uh, oh they know he knows the club like turning down leads in the process it seems as well does that mean Celtic are a bigger club than Leeds United we've had this discussion on air one day Lashing O'Reilly of course a keen fervent Celtic supporter and uh, Cameron our own Leeds man went to blows almost Jared has to be said over who's the bigger club you, you're, you're talking fan base you're talking stadium you're talking interest um, and dominance in Europe uh, it's, 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 a, it's a level one but I'm interested to see what people think but my point is Brendan Rodgers has decided Celtic are a bigger club than Leeds maybe he's just sick of the Premier League like he's had his he's had his time with Leicester there the last couple of years and probably wants to get back up to somewhere where he's well thought of is that a stretch now it's I think he was beloved until he walked away yeah. and that was seen as an act of treachery by many Celtic fans who were like no you can't go and take a smaller club in their eyes mm. in uh, and now he nearly turned them into a Champions League team which was a, would have been one of the all time great managerial achievements like obviously Ranieri winning the league is kind of a unicorn event but the fact that Rodgers got them to within a match two seasons in a row of the Champions League if they could just have got over the line mm. in either of those and look in one of those seasons he prioritised winning the FA Cup and they did that and they had that trophy so like it, it's all time great period in uh, Leicester City's life now he does bear some responsibility for the fact that the team won't be playing the Premier League next season even though he didn't take them down maybe he would have got them out of it who knows mm. uh, but that that's the hy- hypothetical situation I-, I think Brandon Rogers is a good manager and I know people don't like him because he has self-confidence um, uh, but his teams play good football like his teams do play good football they're, they're good to watch mm. um, turns out he's a very good manager uh, I think that like if there was an Ireland job in the future I you know his son was capped underage by the Republic of Ireland there's no reason not to think that now at some point in the future I'm saying Mm -hmm. we obviously wouldn't be able to afford him now and he's just gone to Celtic and so that's obviously where he's going to be for the long term you'd have to assume that John O'Shea is is the um, most likely succession candidate and that Lee Carsley now is obviously coming into sharp relief if he doesn't get the mm. senior England gig which doesn't seem to be on his radar we'll see how well he, he does in the under 21 euros is it under 20 or under 21 euros whatever I I, I mistake the uh, underage 21s uh, I think it, it is, changes yeah. so much yeah it's like a, it's, we, we changed in GAA to under 20s of course we did but did they not change no they didn't anyway um so I don't know I think Brendan Rodgers as a future Ireland's manager I, he, I can get behind this he's in the tier though of, of club managers that are probably slightly too good to be considered for the Irish job do you know the, the managers that you're like well I'm they, saying at the can, moment yeah I would the next 10-15-20 years Rodgers can get a pretty decent club job 20 years is a long time in football true yeah but like um, he, he he's consistent and like everywhere he has gone so far he has done good things if he can keep that going if his, if his love for the game I'm not saying he's going to be a Roy Hodgson in terms of longevity but he'll be around for a while yeah, maybe managers get to the point where they, they reach a certain age and they're like international football yeah that's for me pick up your X amount of money per year only have to enter when the international camps come around you can go around to the club matches and watch them and act like you're watching your own players but really you're just watching football um, yeah maybe Brendan Rodgers speaking about the Irish character would be be something to, to look forward to yeah, are you on the anti Brendan Rodgers train anti Brendan Rodgers no no I don't think so and, and certainly ch- chatting to a lot of my Celtic fan mates in Monaghan they were keen on Rodgers and, and I, I was surprised at that at first because I was like well 
remember how it ended the last time um, but no straight away when Ange Postacoglu's uh, departure to Spurs became a reality they were like no Brendan Rodgers bring him back he's the obvious candidate if it doesn't happen now as you say they'll be they'll be a, a joke shop and I don't know who We'll come in after that, but it seems it seems relatively close. It's obviously on the back page of this morning. So the other back page that I just want to talk about briefly here is the on the mirror. Gunners have high hopes. Ambitious boss Arteta is ready to move for Chelsea striker Havertz, but wants to cut back on seventy million price tag for Champions League winner. <laughs> seventy million. Is this a is this a is Kai, Kai Havertz the missing piece of the jigsaw for that team? A flaky striker. Is that what is that what they need? I mean. Now, the chances to goals ratio for Kai Havertz it's not really what they need it seems to me yeah, but has he just been flaky and a Chelsea team that has A too many players and B too, mu- too many management changes in the last few years like maybe the solidity of still living in London but moving to a team with Mikel Arteta in charge is exactly what he needs sometimes it's just a small change the colour in jersey um, that can change a player's mentality Havertz is a brilliant footballer there's no doubt about that Um what does he bring to Arsenal? I don't know. Like seventy million. There's a there's an opportunity cost when you sign players at seventy million though, because there's other players you could get for that. Yeah. And it seems to me that shopping at Chelsea and Manchester City is generally expensive. They'll say last season worked out with uh, Jesus and Zinchenko, and I, I do think it's a little bit early for us to just say that that was guaranteed to be a hundred percent success. Let, let's see what happens over the rest of the next eighteen months. Say. Mm. Uh, so far, I'd say. On balance, good, uh, but not as amazing as everybody is. Like, oh look, they transformed the culture of the team. It's like, yeah, okay, but like, actually, a good centre back, uh, improvement in midfield play, and one of the best attacking young footballers in the world would actually, I would argue, was more important. And there was no significant diminution in the quality of the team when Jesus went out. But that's why spending sixty million on Havertz mm. seems high for somebody who has done okay in the Premier League. You know, it's not like he has absolutely torched teams on a consistent basis, week in, week out. No. He's been good in Europe when he's got the opportunity to be good in Europe. Um, I just think it's been such a mess at Chelsea in the last couple of years that you have to give any player there a little bit of leeway to some degree. I feel like every single transfer is between Chelsea and Arsenal, by the way. Like, how many times are players either linked or or sent between the two? Uh, And there was the whole Mudrick saga, of course last year like it just seems to happen quite consistently Havertz is probably a, like is Havertz a better signing than Mason Mount from Manchester United I don't know I, I'm I'm out on both of these can I can I say no to both of them is it no. okay if I'm like I'm going to save my 120 million combined and go and sign some players like I might just hire Brighton's chief scout and see who's yeah. on their list of players and spend my 120 million on all of the players they were going to buy and put them out on loan for a couple of years and then I'll have like five players who are brilliant uh, Havertz goals in the league mm. uh, for Bayer Leverkusen from 2016-2017 on so Leverkusen four goals in 24 games three goals in 30 games 17 goals in 34 games and then 12 goals in 30 games before he moves to Chelsea and it's four goals in 27 games eight goals in 29 games and seven goals in 35 games why are you spending 60 70 million on this for yeah, but isn't that what isn't that what a footballer is is worth nowadays? Who does exactly those numbers? You seven goals a season, eight goals a season, four I know. goals a season. It's a, it's reckless, but like I'm fairly sure this might just be. I don't know if it's sorry. I, I, this is on understat.com. I was looking for the xG, and the xG is like nearly double that. Mm. He's he's underperforming his xG at the moment, like last season chronically. Yeah, you'd wonder like does the likes of. Um, Pochettino know, know something we don't well he's getting rid of him yeah he's getting rid of him does he know something we don't or is he just looking at the stats and going this is shy well, I knew it. Why is it? no go you go you go you go you go out it can come back to bite you though selling to, to teams in the Premier League Like it, it can well I mean like you look at De Bruyne and Salah obviously that's two of the worst transfer decisions that were ever made getting rid of them mm. um, so look it can come back to bite you but I think if you're getting 50, 60, 70 million for those, Chelsea are absolutely delighted. Yeah, you're going to take it. Well, they, they outright rejected 40 million for, for Mason Mount yesterday, straight away, the first bid from, from Old Trafford. Um, I don't, do they want, they probably want twice that amount. But United are obviously starting in a place where they think Mason Mount is worth. Um, it could be one of those transfer sagas that goes and United eventually don't pay what they want. Um, like Manchester United in a transfer saga. Mm, I know. That starts at the start of the season and doesn't finish until the last day of the transfer window. 
and then the player is completely discombobulated for the first six months. We don't really see the best of them for maybe the first full season. No, that's not going to happen to Manchester United, is it? They're such a well-run club, Shane. <laughs> Uh, I'm still uh, they're not by the way uh, whatsoever a well run club um, but I'm still traumatised as a kid by Classy on Huntelaar he was one he was like one of my favourite players as a kid and I remember the, the transfer saga rumbling on through the summer and I, I just I'd nearly already bought the jersey the uh, you know taking out the mortgage to buy a Classy on Huntelaar jersey because every letter costs a little bit extra Um so yeah, those those sagas tended to rumble on when you were a United fan as a kid. Yeah, they were just the league match fixtures for that I was giving you for Havertz. There, he did play ten games in the Champions League last season and scored two goals, so that would improve things slightly. But uh, seven goals and one assist in thirty-five Premier League appearances. No, not having a pal. Mm. You're, yeah, but you're, you're running off just stats there, Chair. What about the? the impact he has on a game what about man of the match performances what about involvements in goals do you know I don't know you got to look at the big picture here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stats man yeah. over there. Havertz, I just, um, I, like, he's a good player. And I, I'm sure with a good manager, he could be a functional member of a team. And, you know, if he's gone to Arsenal, he's not going to be uh, required to do stuff week in, week out. He'll come into the team instead, or as well as Martinelli and Jesus, and they'll be able to change their, their formation. And maybe that's what they need for an assault in the Champions League. They're going to play slightly different away from home or something. I don't, I, you know, obviously a lot goes into a decision mm. to try and sign a player like that. Or else this is Chelsea trying to drum up some sense that actually, you know what, we need to get rid of Havertz here and we need to get rid of... There was um, there was one deal Chelsea were linked with. It might be the Onana deal or it's somebody else, maybe it's a midfielder, where they were like, oh, we'll give you money and you can have your pick of one of these five players as well. Mm. And I guess they're hoping that Inter are like, oh, we'll take all five of them, no problems. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's not a great look, isn't it, when you're offering up to five players? You're screwed. Yeah. You are absolutely screwed. Um, but I, again, I think Pochettino can turn that around because he can just pick a squad of 18 and that's the squad week in, week out and they can play every single game, give or take, because there's no distractions. There's no other tournament or competition for them to play in. So mm. He's got his hands full, Pochettino, let me tell you. Um, yeah, almost almost of sympathy for Frank Lampard if I have to deal with that, that dressing room.